We're gonna do the tip test at the ramp. We're gonna check his prop. So he's turning 5,800 RPMs. We're not terribly heavy between us, but 5,800 RPMs running right at 50. Yeah, on, on a little choppier water, I can run maybe 53 to 55, maybe. Well, and you said you think if you lower the motor back down, you may pick up some speed, Yeah, too. but I don't know if it's worth messing with that. I mean, That's I'm all for comfort. It's got a great hole shot. We'll show you the hole shot right now. Yeah, I would cut it. And then, yeah, you'll be fine. Well, that's really impressive so we've talked about this a lot in rough waters one of the keys is can you slow the boat down and maintain nose control not get porpoising and that was 18.4 miles an hour yeah and the nose stayed steady on it yeah my uh the other bass boats i have you put you just either you get on pad or you don't right that's right yeah it's really a pretty versatile boat for me yeah it's a great little boat and it feels bigger than it is. It rides bigger. It rides nice. It really, really, it feels nice bigger. bigger and it doesn't have the slappy sound I've experienced in some other metal boats. So, my buddy Jim Tut, most of you guys know Jim's FLW Tour Pro, and uh, Jim is, gosh, I can't remember what boat Jim's running now. Forgive me, Jim, I think it's a Phoenix, but uh, he lives on Lake Cherokee in East Texas, and he has a metal boat that he keeps in his stall there, and it's a little Ranger. And he had gone out last fall with a guy in this boat and had fished out of it and was just really, really impressed. Now, we've not done the Ranger yet, but he was really impressed with the quality build of the ride in this boat. And uh, I gotta say, since I'm, I'm bleeding all over the place, uh, I'm right along with Jim. I'm, I'm very, very, very impressed with this boat. And the finish, it's got, it's got a nice finish. Is that, what's that material above my rod there? Is that, is that like a bed liner type material? Yeah, I get oh, a, like a poly deck. Holly yeah. spray or something. Yeah. They have several options. You can have just this area, C deck, yeah. and they have the rest of it carpeted or um, this uh, whatever poly coating or whatever it is. I don't know the true name of it, but. And and the other thing I'll point out. So when we started fishing today, it was 95 degrees. This stuff's not really hot. No. I I would have thought it would have been really really hot, and so I wouldn't hesitate to. Now, I'm sure it's more expensive, but I wouldn't hesitate to fully deck it. And, I think and, longevity. Well, and, and Scott made another great point. He said if you, like, if, if one of my stupid dogs scratched it or you got pain in it or something and you couldn't get it off, you can literally peel one section of this up, call Vex and say, I need port side rod box, you know, here's my color, and you can buy that piece and glue it right back down. So that's really nice, uh, really nice feature. Gotcha. Okay, so one other thing that Scott did mention to me was, uh, and I've noticed it, well, two things. Uh, it, the boat does have that drifty front end feel you get with most metal boats. The front end will really drift around on you uh, if, if, the, if something's not running. And then the second thing he said is, he does find this boat a little bit difficult, especially by himself to put on the trailer. So I'm gonna put it on the trailer here, but he's owned a bunch of boats. He's owned Rangers, he's owned other metal boats. So the dude knows what he's talking about when he says it's a little bit tough to load. Now, so we've got a, uh, we've got, uh, it's a single console boat. 
and you can see back there right now with me sitting in the middle of the boat we got just a little tiny bit of a list to the uh, starboard side so let's take a look same thing we've done in the rest of our test so with me standing all the way on this side not much 2.8 degree list which would be probably 2.4 and then this side quite a bit less because we're counterbalancing i can't read it i think it's saying 1.4 degree list and then we go to the back of the boat uh, what i'm going to tell you right now is it is not a really tippy metal boat so there's the back side you guys can see whatever the distance is or the the, the uh the list is and then we'll move to the port side same spot where a guy might fish and even if i jump up and down i mean i get excited and set the hook it's just not a real tippy boat but again it does have i'll try to show this to you this is probably pretty hard to demonstrate let's check it out right here so shut the motor down and you see pretty quickly it'll drift offline with any wind at all so i think that's just a common thread we're going to see in these metal boats that aren't uh, that aren't as sharp a v boat as what we're used to in glass boats you, you metal boat guys are used to that it's not going to bother you a bit but uh, that's just a little something i noticed See what you're talking about. I believe you've got it a little too far in the water, though. You have to have it this far in the water to get it up on there. Yeah, on this ramp. Am I centered? Yeah, you're pretty good. Slow when you get there. All right, that wasn't bad uh it's you know getting used to but he said you got to be that far back in the water to get the nose up on there this boat ramp is shallow. it is a shallow ramp yeah not a much of a uh angle to the boat. yeah so you don't get a nose lift real good on it all right we're gonna get out we're gonna look at the uh, prop we're gonna get up under and look at the bottom of the boat just to see the configuration of the bottom of the boat so Okay, so as I said in the first video, I'm not going to grade any of these boats until I've been in a bunch of these boats. Uh, also, Scott mentioned that he believes that they may have changed the thickness of the aluminum on the hull on these boats. So I'm going to try to do a little digging on that before I, before I grade these boats. Uh, I don't know. You think there might have been some boats that were having some issues with the bottoms, but, yeah, I mean, but that's all hearsay. So neither one of us knows anybody had that happen. I, was, I do know somebody that did have it happen. Okay. Um, and they took care of them 100%. Took care of them good. But kind of like, so I haven't mentioned this, who this is yet, but the guy that, whose tracker I'm going to look at, uh, Kyle, uh, his 2020 tracker had a crack where uh, a weld broke free or the hole failed, if you will. And tracker's taking care of it. We'll talk more about that in the future. But the problem is he's going to be out of a boat for basically two months. So. That kind of sucks because if your boat's in for warranty work, trust me, the bank doesn't suspend the boat payments, nor do they give you a loaner boat, correct? Uh, not that I'm aware of. So the only two things I've seen in this entire boat uh, that I would want to see changed um, are, well, three things. Uh, it does not have an old crap handle on the passenger's left arm. It's got a good one on the right side. And it's actually tall enough that you could get your hand in there with a glove on. And I'd love to see one on the other side to stabilize yourself with. And the ice chest is just a uninsulated aluminum lid. And that is just not gonna hold ice long-term. Uh, sorry, that's just not gonna hold ice long-term at all. Then this will surprise absolutely nobody. I, I recorded over it. So you guys know I do not like the raised lettering below uh well at the water line that's not protected by some type of gunling so uh, not a problem on Louisville, fork toledo i think you're gonna have a really hard time keeping the really pretty vexus letters attached to the side of the boat and actually i've had some guys tell me that is true 
sorted, but we got four wheel brakes on here. This is an upgraded tandem axle trailer. That's a look at the hull. In the back, there is a uh, remote drain plug. I don't know if you saw it or not, but he got a pair of pliers because it doesn't poke all the way out. It's got a step hull on the bottom of it. Very clean, built-in buckles. I mean, it's, it's set up like a glass boat. Got a ladder. He did not put poles on it, and he did not put uh, a hydraulic jack plug. So know. he's running a 23-pitch Tempest Plus. So we're going to come up here a little later this year, and we're going to run my 23 Fury on there just out of curiosity to see the performance difference because you guys know I am a total prop geek, and I like seeing how it makes a difference on Boat motor's lifted pretty high on the slide master. Well, I gotta tell you, oh, and it's even got a remote place to plug in your charger. It, it is, it is well appointed. It, and I'll say this, it feels a lot more like riding in a glass boat than it does riding in a metal boat. All right, a couple other things I did not note uh, walking through the boat is uh, really well, uh, not backlit, but really easy to read um control panel there i don't see a light that shines does that light up at night where you can read it yes so all my gauges light up all my compartments light up my seat adjusts front and back i do have a tilt wheel too okay good 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 to know and then the front i like the switches a little bit hard to get to but that's just because he's got big mounts up here but Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, it's a beautiful, beautiful boat. I mean, it really is. Uh, they make a pretty product up there in Northwest Arkansas. Very, very close to where my, they make my bass catch. And uh, once we get enough of them looked at, we'll start grading them out. But I can tell you right now, this is, this is gonna be a hard boat to beat. Now, this is a little higher price point than a lot of the boats we're gonna look at, but very slick boat. I would like to look at a, a little bit less expensive model of one. So what's the next model down? Eight, there's an 1880. 1880, the difference you're going to see in the 1880, you won't get this. So the front deck is going to be a little bit smaller uh -huh. and you will not have the cooler. This cooler, I mean, the top could be insulated, mm -hmm. but it's all, everything in this boat, which makes it right a little bit better, is it is fully injected. Yeah, yeah. Well, and to be truthful, I would probably, if I was fishing out of this boat in the summertime, I would either lay a ice chest on the back deck or I'd buy one of like one of the Ego soft ones that zips that will just slide down in there. So you kind of be double insulated. Like yeah, yeah. And you got to like a guy who pulls it off the water and cleans it. Someday, some, someday that's going to be me. Someday I'm going to actually clean my boat. Thanks, guys.